Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be working on the fourth and final installment of this Beam Hammer build series. If you haven't watched up to this point, there's three other parts, so you may want to go and check those out so you have a better understanding of how the rest of this hammer was constructed. The plans are available for this at www.blacksmithpdfs.com. So, what I'm working on here is essentially the guts. We're going to start with that and then we're going to finish things up. So at the start of this video, I essentially I welded up the cam in the through hole piece. And we want to make sure that we weld towards the largest portion of the cam, not the smallest portion of the cam. What I mean by that is the way the cam is sitting right now on the table, you want to weld just that upper side because if you weld the lower side you'll have problems with it hitting the housing of the cam like you're seeing there so now the next part is is we have got to take and work on our clevis piece or our actual piece that we are going to be working on for the adjustment of the hitting height and all this is is a tractor top link with both ends cut off. After we've got that cut off, then we're just going to weld up our clevis piece. Once again, these are all de this is all detailed out in plans with the correct sizes of material and placement of holes and things of that nature. So you're going to see me do quite a bit of fiddling in this video to make sure that everything's nice and plumb and square. This is kind of a critical portion of this build. Because if you get something that's kind of running out of square or out of true, it can throw the hammer die system off to where the hammer's dies don't really match up the greatest. So you want to try to get everything as centered and centralized as possible. Check, recheck, and double check all your measurements before you fully weld stuff in. This will save you a lot of headache. So now we got one end of our clevis done. Now we'll weld it to the cam housing itself. So as you can see, I just got tack welds right around this cam housing. Uh, you know, no need in making this thing airtight. Also, there's not a greaser in this, so you can just rub some grease on the actual cam itself, and with centrifugal force, it will find its way up into the housing. And that's how I chose to grease this system. You can do what you want. You can always add a grease cert to the cam housing if you want. Once again, this isn't an airtight system. So now while our beam's sitting in place, we're going to find where this thing hangs nice and straight and neutral. And we're going to mark out the holes for our pillow block bearings and get these holes drilled through the beams. Now these are through bolts as this is going to take a lot of jerking up and down motion. So we want to make sure that we have good ample washers and support from the underside for these things to pull against. Otherwise, if you were to just use a lag bolt here, it would eventually warble it out and it would eventually just yank it out of the hole. You have a lot of weight here. This power hammer ram comes in right at about 37 pounds just sitting there. So there is a lot of force and energy that's going to be this hammer produces. You want to make sure that you bolt it really good. Anywhere that I've used lag bolts and you feel more comfortable using through bolts, I highly suggest it. Now, all this is is just me drilling all the way through. Once you got one side, you can make sure that this is all squared up and check your dies for squareness and that everything's lining up perfectly before you drill and bolt everything in. As you can see, this is the part of the process that will end up starting getting very, very exciting because you're getting everything tweaked and tuned in and when you put on your actual pulley, now it's getting exciting. Now, now you can start telling that this is going to be a power hammer. And that is just as cool as can be. 
So here I am, I'm just playing with the adjustment systems, kind of seeing, make sure everything lines up fine. And now we'll move on to mounting the motor. So mounting the motor, same thing, you just want to put it up there as a test fit. Make sure it's aligned with the pulley, so this way you don't have a, you know, belts falling off or having undue wear. And then go ahead and drill out and put through bolts in this as well. You want your motor and this whole system here to be locked in very tightly. Uh, you don't want a whole lot of flex or play, especially since you're dealing with wood. So definitely take your time and do the job right here. Now also, I want to mention about the tooling impact driver that I'm using in here. All my shop tools are usually posted in the description box below. That is at an Amazon affiliate link or an eBay affiliate link that you can go over and purchase uh, something if you need it. Or you can read up on the tools that I'm using in the shop on the daily. And, you know, it's a great way of getting stuff done. But I highly suggest an impact driver. This makes this job so much easier. I wouldn't want to have to do this with just a wrench and have to run all these lags in. So an impact driver like this with a good socket set is priceless. So now, pretty self-explanatory, I'm creating our anchor system, or the way the anchor plates are going to be. And this is actually going to hold it to the floor. Now, this is a part that I'll have to take and point out. You're going to notice that I actually did this the wrong way one way. So this has to go on a very specific direction. This bolt has to go on a very specific direction. If you turn it the wrong way, uh, you'll find out that your belt doesn't align. So I'll show you what I mean here in just a second. Now I'm getting all this stuff tack welded up. Once again, trying to make everything true and square. I chose a piece of angle iron here because it had more meat than just a flat piece of stock to it, which really takes and helps out. And now what this is going to be is this is going to be our clutch pulley system. Now you're going to see where I went wrong here in just a minute when I try to fit this up. So now using a previously drilled hole, we're going to go ahead and put on our two angle iron pieces that become our foot treadle. So this way, when we get it all tightened up, we can work on our actual foot treadle portion itself. And actually in the design, I did change this portion here to just being like a loop foot pad, which turned out to be better than what I did in this current video. But now you can see a problem I'm having here. See, I should have done it the opposite way. So, no big deal. You want to make sure that you have your pulley on the outside in. Or on the outside in the flat piece to be against the actual beam itself. And then that kind of gives it a natural guide in a seat. So there again, I was just using the belt to line it up to where it has just the right amount of drag on the belt and got it all hooked together. This here is our foot treadle spring assembly. This is what allows the foot treadle to return to the top position. We're going to get that welded to the front here. And then we're also going to drill a hole all the way through the beam just above it to be able to stretch out that spring and have a carrier bolt to it. So this is what you should have once it's all finished said and done. You can see the bolt going through that allows that spring to stay up nice and return. Here's how you can do your adjustments for height and lock that down. And as you can see it hammers pretty well. So this hammer was a lot of fun to this hammer was a lot of fun to build. I know that you like it. It definitely impressed me. And I'm not just saying that because I built it, but I, I really do enjoy the very large dies on it and the type of material that it can work.
For instance, this piece here that I'm working on is a piece that's about an inch wide by inch and a quarter by about two inches. And you can see it doesn't have really any problems forging on something like that. You know, this here right now is getting actually quite cold. Looks a little hotter on the camera. But, yeah. I just really enjoyed building this hammer. I think it's a, I think it's a great option for a lot of smiths out there that are just wanting to build this in their garage. Uh, that can't afford one of the big production hammers nowadays. And, uh, yeah. I think if you build it, you guys will be severely impressed and happy. So, yeah, I guess that's all I really got to take and say about it. I hope you all really enjoyed this video. Uh, if you guys have any questions or, you know, thoughts or things like that, you can put them down in the comment section down below. Uh, I will eventually assemble all the most common questions I get about this hammer and just do kind of like a video response on all those at some point in time and to try to answer everybody's questions as best as possible. But that's it for today. Thank you all for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. God bless you and we'll catch you on the next one.